We talk about battles a lot on this channel, generally large ones like Geonosis or Coruscant, which involved millions of combatants and had a major effect on the course of the Clone Wars. But not every decisive battle is as big as those two. Beyond that, not every battle is won through overwhelming might. In some cases, superior support in a specific theatre may be all it takes to turn the tide. Both of these are the case in the Battle of Teth, the battle we'll be looking at today. Teth, despite being a very small battle by Clone Wars standards, changed the course of the whole war, and though most of what we see of it focused on the ground battle, it was actually the nuances of its naval theatre that had the most impact. In this video, we'll be analysing the battle in detail, focusing on its naval theatre. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Teth was a fairly obscure world, located on the treeless trade route in a region that, during the Clone Wars, was considered wild space. It was part of a set of sectors rimward of hut space that weren't officially hut territory, but were, in practice, much like Tatooine. Teth was a colourful jungle world, home to hut vacation homes, a few minor settlements, and a whole lot of wilderness. In ordinary circumstances, a battle likely would never have been fought there, at least not during the Clone Wars. But all that changed when Rotta, the son of Jabba the Hutt, was kidnapped and brought to an abandoned Bomar monastery on the planet. The Hutts were furious over this kidnapping, but the mercenaries they sent to retrieve Rotta were killed, and Jabba, in desperation, ultimately turned to the Republic for aid, promising that the Hutts would grant Republic forces passage along Hutt-controlled trade routes if they ensured Rotta's safe return. This was a big deal. Hutt's base was huge and shared a long border with one of the biggest enclaves of Separatist space, and access to the Hutt's trade routes would allow the Republic to force the Separatists into a two-front war in several key sectors. Thus, the Republic agreed to help Jabba. Republic intelligence suggested that the CIS was behind the kidnapping and, spoiler alert, they were. But the Separatists sent their own messengers to Jabba and they cast blame on the Jedi instead. Both Obi-Wan Kenobi and Count Dooku made their case to Jabba personally on Tatooine, and Jabba ultimately decided to grant the strategic privileges the Hutts were promising to whoever gave him his son back. Thus, Republic forces were dispatched to Teth under the command of Jedi General Anakin Skywalker and his new Padawan, Ahsoka Tano. Skywalker seemingly didn't have all that much manpower to spare for the mission. He and his forces arrived in a single acclimated class assault ship, which remained in orbit, apparently on standby. Skywalker and his men deployed to his surface in a squadron of LAAT gunships commanded by Lieutenant Hawk, with four or five gunships in total, alongside a pair of LAAT carriers. The carriers dropped off a pair of ATTE walkers, while the gunships deployed the men of Torrent Company, a detachment of the 501st Legion commanded by Captain Rex about 144 clones in all. On the way down, the gunships took heavy fire from the monastery, which was located atop a large, near-vertical cliff. The Separatists had troops at the top, a battalion of B-1 and B-2 droids, a handful of droidicas and STAPs, and several DSD-1 dwarf spider droids, which acted as light artillery, firing flak at the gunships. The gunships were all able to land without incident, however, and the Republic sustained no casualties until they had landed in the jungle below the monastery. Using grappling hooks and the magnetic feet of the ATTEs, Skywalker and his men managed to quickly scale the cliff and secure the monastery, albeit at the cost of several clones and one of the walkers. They did so without support. Hawk and his gunships apparently returned to the assault ship in orbit after deploying the troops, and that assault ship made no further appearance during the battle, presumably waiting in orbit for a signal from the ground team. That signal never came, as CIS forces inside the monastery jammed Republic communications all throughout the battle. 
Believing Separatist forces on Teth to have been defeated, Skywalker, Tano, and R2-D2 ventured into the monastery complex while Rex and Torrent Company remained behind to defend the entrance. As the Jedi ventured into the monastery, Separatists began jamming Republic comms and reinforcements appeared in orbit above the planet. At least one Munificent class star frigate, and possibly more, joined the party and drove off Skywalker's assault ship before landing reinforcements on the surface. The Munificent released several squadrons of Vulture droids and two C-9979 landing craft which deployed an additional battalion of battle droids around the monastery. Torrent Company and their surviving ATTE did their best to defend the monastery, but the Separatists had air support and they didn't, which made all the difference. The Vulture droids disabled the ATTE, while the ground troops, under the command of Asajj Ventress, massacred Torrent Company. Only Captain Rex and five other clones survived the onslaught and were taken prisoner. It's worth noting that in both assaults, Torrent Company was facing roughly the same number of battle droids. The dramatic difference in outcome was primarily due to Separatist air support. Though by this point in the Clone Wars film, we haven't actually seen any of the space battle yet, it had already made a huge difference. Fortunately for the Republic, however, what was left of Torrent Company had space forces of their own incoming. After Ventress followed Skywalker and Tano into the monastery, Admiral Yularen and Obi-Wan Kenobi arrived at Teth with the Veneta class Star Destroyer, Spirit of the Republic, which moved to engage Ventress's Munificent class Star Frigate. As it did, it deployed several squadrons of V-19 Torrent Starfighters led by Kenobi from the cockpit of his own Delta 7B Interceptor. Kenobi and his squadrons engaged the Confederacy's Vulture Droids, drawing them away from the monastery while the Spirit of the Republic opened fire on the Confederacy's capital ships. The Spirit of the Republic also deployed several LAAT gunships, some to extract what remained of Skywalker's expedition and others carrying ground reinforcements, Commander Cody and a detachment of the 212th Attack Battalion. Having retrieved Rota, Skywalker and Tano called one of the gunships for evac, but it was shot down by a Vulture droid which landed and engaged the two Jedi directly. Unable to call for another ship, they ultimately decided to ride a cancel to an adjacent Mesa where a freighter, the Twilight, was docked. Meanwhile, Kenobi and his pilots achieved the upper hand in the aerial battle before the Jedi General disengaged to help Cody and his men rescue the survivors of Torrent Company. Cody's gunships took out Ventress's landing craft and then he and his men finished off the Confederacy's ground forces. Kenobi then set off into the monastery to find Asajj Ventress. Meanwhile, Skywalker and Tano stole the Twilight, which turned out to be a Separatist ship anyway, and used it to escape Ventress. They prepared to abandon the battle, as they had Rota and needed to get into Tatooine as soon as possible. To this end, the Jedi waded into the space battle, hoping to rendezvous with the Spirit of the Republic, but they not only picked up several Vulture droids, but also came under fire from the Star Destroyer itself, which had scanned them as enemy craft. Skywalker was able to contact Admiral Yularen and correct the misunderstanding, but before the Twilight could dock, the Spirit of the Republic's hangars were bombed by Vulture droids and critically damaged forcing the Jedi to take the Twilight all the way to Tatooine. There, after a few more shenanigans, they ultimately returned Rota to Jabba and won access to the Hutt's trade routes for the Republic. After the Twilight made its escape, Ventress abandoned the battle. Without her leadership and with overwhelming Republic air support, her surviving ground forces were destroyed. The remaining Vulture droids and the Munificent class Star Frigate in orbit presumably either retreated or were destroyed as well, and the Republic was left victorious, despite severe damage to the spirit of the Republic. Despite the valiant efforts of the clone troopers fighting on the ground, most of the credit for this victory belongs on the shoulders of the Republic's pilots and the crew of the spirit of the Republic, who turned the tide of the battle during the final hour. Air support and the naval battle may have been a secondary concern in the film itself, 
But as we believe we've demonstrated today, they ended up making all the difference. So that's our look at the Battle of Teth, particularly its naval theater. But what do you think? Are there other Clone Wars battles you'd like us to discuss? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and what you think of this particular one and if it gives you as heavy a dose of nostalgia as it does me. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.